today we're finishing up a second wave of models for a friend of mine. I finished up the rest of his Brotherhood of Steel, and so now I'm working on his T45s that he wants done up as well. Uh, so we've already airbrushed Prime and uh, the metallics on it, and now we've just been applying some basic rust effect onto the metal before we do any kind of wash. And I decided the last ones I did were a little too heavy on the rust effect. So I've gone a lot lighter. So I'm going to go over, I have to do a bit of touch up on the backs of these. So I figured I'd show how I do that. So I've been using uh, Vallejo wash rust effects. This is just the regular wash. Uh, there's also a darker one. So I did the these current ones with the regular. So I'm going to go ahead and use the dark and get some contrasting uh, wash effects, but the same test goes for both. So we're just going to do some drops. So that's like four drops. You have to be careful with these bottles. The uh, caps on them, if you squeeze, they'll really just shoot out. Generally, I just hold it and let it drip itself. So that's four drips, and now what I do to kind of water it down so we don't get a serious effect as last time is I've been using a uh, contrast medium. And this can be, anyone who's worked with the GW's current line of paints knows what a pain it can be to get paint out of it. So I saw this online, and uh, so it's kind of a drip method. So I've shaken it up, and then, you know, you catch your paint in that little kind of cup and a lot of people just work out of that and that's fine for a little bit but if you're mixing it can be a bit more of a pain so what you do is kind of twist this top and squeeze it a bit and that gets some of the liquid out so that was about two drops and I want to even it up so I'm going to get a couple more and see how that looks so same thing now if I'm working with airbrush what I'm gonna do is just clip off all of these pieces here so the tab on the back that lets it sit upright and the hinges and then you don't have to hold both parts in order to do that just an idea I've been kicking around I haven't actually done it yet but I'm gonna do that with my airbrush paints from GW um, I much prefer brands that have dropper bottles yeah, it's still a little heavy, so I think I'm going to add a couple more drops of this. And what I'm looking for is just how, you know, what is left behind when I kind of paint the sides here. Just kind of let the paint run down a bit. Yeah, that should be good. Alright, so... For these, I'm not using a very heavy, I'm not going for kind of a standard wash on these. I hadn't done the um, tanks thinking I was going to paint them a different color, but they are metal as well, so we're going to keep them the same color. And we're just kind of flicking it on here a bit. We mostly want it to settle into grooves. And then I'm going to hit up these lines on the shoulders a bit, get the heavier rust to kind of flow into them. Since these are 45s, you know, obviously they're a bit older, a little bit underneath the helmet there, under these handle parts here. Along the legs, we kind of want to get in this groove. And around the bottom of these knee braces here. And then kind of down along the lines on the front part of the shin, and then we're hitting up the same spots on the other leg as well, and 
and diluting it with that contrast medium means it flows a bit better gives us more control and lets us decide how we want it to be placed as opposed to letting the paint kind of run itself a little bit of fluff getting in there, we don't want that to stain upper arm pieces a bit and then the groin plate as well and that just adds a bit more tonality especially up against the lighter rust we had we don't want this to be replacing that rust we just want to accentuate the parts where it would have been deeper flowed. We'll just kind of, uh, here we go. And if you're, you've gone too heavy, don't be afraid to kind of clean off your brush and then use it to suck the paint back up. But generally, also, if you've gone a bit heavy, keep it a couple seconds and just see how it flows. You may like the way it goes. And the contrast medium means it's not going to dry up super fast. And we're just kind of hitting those same spots that we did with the other suit. We will be giving this guy some rank markings for Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, my friend's force is going to be kind of a mixed force of all power armors. Obviously I'm not nearly good enough to paint a freehand Brotherhood of Steel symbol on his chest. And I don't have transfers, but that's fine. I said we're just trying to highlight lines on the armor here. Basically wherever we think water buildup might happen. Alright. And we will be going over most of this with a black wash at the end. So if some of it seems a little too striking, that's the one I already did, <laughs> then we don't have to worry about it because it will calm down a bit after I'm trying to match lines simply because well, it was already pretty dark you know these are the same suits if they're in the same operating theater they're going to wear and tear the same so we want them to match guy with the plasma gun is going to be fun because we get to go in and do the plasma cells so we're going to do a little technical GW paint on there I say I'm not a huge fan of GW paints besides their contrast line but I do have a lot of it simply because it's sometimes the easiest stuff to get Plus they do have a great range and a very high pigment. I just don't like their bottles really. Since we didn't do a lot, this is going to have dried pretty quick. So we're free to move on with our next part, which is going to be kind of highlighting any of the undersuit. 
So there's two different shades to um, the undersuit in the pictures. The chest section tends to be a black ribbed, whereas the um, kind of the elbow and the knee joints that we're going to be really looking on are more um, khaki because it's the actual underframe as opposed to the front section just being um, part of the armor itself. So we're going to kind of stick with that. So we've got our khaki. Maybe a little too much water. And we'll see if it is. We'll just add a little bit more paint. Vallejo paint tends to be pretty well pigmented, so even if you over saturate it with water, it'll bounce back pretty easy. So I'm just going to kind of hit these. Try to work here. And this is important, and it helps break up the model, otherwise it just kind of looks the same color all over. So that's kind of why we do this, is it helps add that bit of depth and uh, character. Otherwise it's just, you know, all metal, kind of boring. Then these here. So the front, the, the right knee on here, you see it's pushed up against it so we don't have to worry about it there but on the front that means it reveals so we're just going to apply a little bit we got some looks like we got a little bit of hair stuck in here and that happens especially if you have pets uh, you'll get hairs sticking so I keep some tweezers handy just to pull it off side of the knee we don't have to worry about. Alright. And we're just going to hit that with all three real quick. And each pose is going to kind of have its own difficulties as far as doing this. For the most part these knees and interior elbow joints on this guy are all covered. So we just have to worry about the back. Now we're just going to fill in these ribbed sections. And we're actually going to go over this with a wash later that will bring out all of the ridges without issue. And rather than using a brown wash, we've got enough weathering with the rust effect that we'll just do a black and it should be fine. Alrighty. And then last guy. Front leg there. One of the other reasons we water our paints is it makes it easier to flow into crevasses. So one thing to watch for when you're painting is just to not paint to the edges and see if you're, you, the paint will flow naturally. You'll save yourself a lot of mistakes just by applying and waiting. And if you've thinned your paints enough and you're doing a large section, these aren't large enough to worry about, but if you're, say, for instance, I used to do some Signar models, so lots of blue armor, so it was a storm army, I would do 
probably three coats of the blue to get the armor to where I needed it to be. Because if you thinned them properly, your first coat you put down, you're still going to see primer, and then it's going to take two or three coats to properly remove that. Which is not a problem, you actually wind up with a very nicely shaded base coat. If your paint's so thick that it goes down in one coat with no trouble, you're most likely going to have paintbrush lines, that sort of thing. So it may take a little bit more time. And early on when I was used to paint, I was guilty of it myself. But just doing those extra coats with a thin instead of one thick when we're not talking about, say, contrast paint. It can make all the difference. Alright, next, the other primary color for the, just the armor itself is going to be our dark gray. And we're going to be applying that to hoses and the front chest plate and, if we can, to the air, upper area underneath the leg armor and around the butt plate. So, uh, for that, I fall back on my Necromancer cloak. And, again, we're just watering them down a little. That's going to be too watery, I can tell already. So I'm going to add another dollop of paint. And consistency of paint is just something you have to experiment with. Um, once you know a particular brand's consistency, you can generally use that for all models, but you still need to take some time and get it right when you get a new type of paint. So we're just hitting these pipes that are on the back here. They kind of tuck around and go to the front. Once again, we're just trying to break up all of the metallic and add a bit of detail to the model. Now, for this, especially, as I said, don't try and get close to the edges. The wash that we apply later will do that for us. We're just trying to pick out the area. And come under here. And that should be fine. Then we've got the hoses and the eye pieces. Which this brush is a little too big. So we're going to change up brushes. This is also an older one. I usually only use it for terrain, but I mean for basing. But it's still a good brush. Now this is a more detailed one. So we're just going to go in here and make sure that we're just hitting that hose. And then we want to kind of darken the eyes as well. Again, we don't have to get perfect because the wash will come through and fix anything that we miss. Just want to make sure we're not going outside of the eye hole because then we'll have to fix that. Alright. The pipe as it comes around the back. And this is definitely a little watery still. Now with this, we're going to want to get the chest, so what we're going to do is come up under to begin with, and we're just trying to layer that on a bit, 
There we go. Now we're going to come down from the top as well, just to make sure we got the bottom of it. And then looking at it, yep. Looking fine. Moving on. So to this guy, chest is a lot easier to get to. So we're just gonna kinda nail that real quick. little tank pipes. And with this one, there's not much to get around the plate here. Maybe a little under it. And it's pretty well covered in the front, so we're not going to worry about it. When we apply our wash at the end, we'll help pick it out. Apply another coat on here. As I said, the brush is getting a little heavy on pigment. Just want to wash that before moving on to the final one. So I have to come up under. We're not really going to see much of the chest on this one. So it's not as important to get this, but I still like to hit it. Um, we can kind of see the leg joint of this guy here, so we're going to darken that. The other one's not as necessary. Now we're going to start getting the hose here. Tag the eyes. When working on these, um, the various Fallout game Wikipedias are an invaluable resource for detailed coloration, you know, which part should be which. This goes for everything from weapons to the full suits. That's what I use a lot, is I just go to the, the wikis. So, in this case, I pull up the T-45 armor. See that it's pretty boring, mostly metal and pipe work. So I know what colors I need to work with to get a game accurate appearance. Alright, and this leg here, just get a little bit of lining done. And we're good. Alright, so, one thing is that uh, these helmets have headlamps on them as opposed to the what I was looking at online. So what I'm going to do is take a bit of liquid primer, so the Wraithbone base is what I use for primer. Um, and then I'm going to use some, shake that a bit more contrast yellow to really pick out those lantern effects. Oh, yeah, you know, that little bit of color will really show up nice. 
So we're going to fill that in. And then for the kind of targeting eye, I'm also going to do that. And I'm going to apply red to it. Contrast as well. And since we're going over this nice wraith bone base coat, that color will really pop. And we're just kind of dotting the center to get it to kind of fill in. Alright, so we'll let that dry. So having looked up the Super Sledge online, I now know that the grip, as well as this little tank piece on the underside, are yellow. So I'm going to apply some primer to that as well. And I'm going to be using my contrast yellow on it, which I have raved about in the past. Contrast yellow is a thing of beauty. Okay. So just the lower half. So this is basically the tank that fuels the super sludge jet engine. And we're just trying to make sure we don't apply the color on top of the rest of the, of the model. And unfortunately, this topper is not behaving very well. There we go. I only have a couple of the GW ones the grips, which are nice. But just a bit of silly putty on top of an old rattle can top serves just as good sometimes. Especially if I was, say, doing a large army type build, I wouldn't want to have to have, because th at that point you want to paint multiple models all at the same time. So you don't want to have to wait around. You want to do ten at a time or something like that. Alright, now, while that's drying, we're going to move on to the plasma rifle. So again, I'm going to pull it up real quick online. I'm going to take a look at it, get a vague idea of what I want to do where, and go from there. So, looking at the plasma rifle, obviously we've got the green cells along the centerpiece there, and actually this little back bump is usually yellow. So we're going to go ahead and color those up, uh, and then also these tiny little toppers should be a little ringed with green. So we'll do those first before we get a lot of paint built up on our brush to try and you know pick them out a bit uh, and go from there. But first we're going to apply that same wraith bone to the back end because uh, that's going to be yellow. Oop. Almost spilled. do it first so it dries first and from what I saw it's just this little bump back here all right so that should be good 
but a lot of color on these models is going to come from the weapons. I am leaving the minigun mostly in its metallic state. Uh, when the black wash goes over it, it'll tone it down quite a lot, and then I'll do some burning effect, you know, the, the heated barrels uh, afterwards. Probably starting with uh, rust as a base. I've got a good rust to paint on. Uh, not the liquid stuff we've been using, but a uh, other color. All right, now for the green, we're going to break into some old school paint. So I've got some not super OG, but definitely OG uh, GW. Uh oh, not good. Still liquid. So we've got some scorpion green. So, what we're going to try and do with this, and I actually think what I'm going to do is just hit these tops completely. You can't get as much detail on this model as in the game itself. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Does that not look plasma-y? And then we hit the little viewports. Similar to the eyes, we're just going to kind of dot the center until it's there. Oh yeah. Nice. Really nice and green. So that's going to have some very nice startling color. Now also looking at the picture, the very tippy tip of the barrel is more brass than metal. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. Uh, since I figure out where I put my brass. This is why it's important to put your paints back into a paint rack uh, when you're done. The best paint racks I found as far as affordability and everything is I just get uh, plastic acrylic nail polish racks. They're designed to hold multiple types of sizes so they work with any uh, standard paint pot that I, you know, I have. I've got uh, P3 from Privateer Press in there, Vallejo, Game Color, GW, Army Painter, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, MSP from uh, the name escapes me, but the people that do bones, all of the fits into a standard rack. Um, then I have shelving for my oversized bottles for other things. Um, but just a couple of those and you are well set. Now, brass, 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 brass. I know exactly what type of bottle it's in. Ah, there it is. It's laying down. Now this is actually tinny tin, which is a bit... Oh, no, there's my brass. It was behind my glue. So I don't have to do the darker one. Alright, so, I'm just going to take that, and we're just going to apply it very lightly to the tip. We want it to stand out. And actually, you can see the puddle drying next to it is the tinny tin. You can see just the, the colors difference. Alrighty, so let's see. Picture, yep, just this very, very tip. side of it. And again, this just gives it a very nice appearance. Alright. Yeah, beautiful. So now we're going to go back and apply the yellows, starting with the way, order we painted, to give those a little bit of extra time on drying. Okay, back onto the yellow. So I'm using Contrast Iand in yellow. Uh, it's very nice, bright, 
will really make the helmet stand out. And all we're doing is kind of get that dollop in there. There we go. And it really does just make it stand out nicely. You can see by doing that little bit of white first, it really, really looks good. So I'll do some close-ups of this after we finish up. But there we go. Super Sledge. And the handle. And the handle especially, you can really see the color. So again, nice bit of color coming off of that. Now let's get the back end power supply here. Alright, now we will do the reds. Again, just giving us a little more detail on the helmet. Beautiful. Now, for the plasma rifle, I've got a little wash I'm going to try and apply to maybe give it some tone, but I've got Hex Wraith Flame Technical. It's a very liquid technical paint. Uh, I've not used it much. It's really designed to kind of just flow on. It's kind of like contrast paint in that. So we're just going to kind of touch these little window pieces here. I'm just going to help darken them and maybe give a little shading to it. And I'm not trying to fill the windows up. I'm just trying to like apply a little bit on each one. I don't want to obscure the color underneath, I want to enhance and give it a little two-tone effect almost. Oh yeah, these are coming nicely, I think. Okay, so that darkens them a little bit. Okay, 
so we've got so this is a oop, cable on the back of the super sledge so we want that to not be metallic I'm just gonna turn that with our dark gray as well and running through my head right now as well is that I kind of want to do a little glow effect on the back of this ah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fall back on my contrast paints again so I'm just going to apply a little bit of wraith bone on the back and then I will dab it with a little bit of orange. Don't want to use yellow or red, but I have an orange that I think would make a nice little thruster color for the flame jet that's supposed to shoot out of it. So at this point, other than applying that and the wash, we're done with the model itself. So we're going to move on to the base. Um, so I'm going to bring out my standard base colors I've been over before. I've got my towel light ochre, my two shades of gray, um, a metal if I need one, which will be a darker metal than that. Uh, Gun metal. And let's see. Is my other gray. Ah, there you are. Alright, so first thing I'm going to look for is any wood. No wood on there. I beam, rocks. Um, interesting pattern stonework. Rubble. More stonework. So that's grays, brown, and the metal corrugated. The cool thing of this is that it's got a ton of like bullets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my brass out for my brass. Um, more pattern stonework. I think we'll go with a dark gray on that. Pattern stonework, rubble, and some skulls. So for the skulls, I'm going to go ahead and paint them with Wraith Bone, and then I'm going to use Skeleton Horde Contrast over them, which that is a basic skeleton effect for everything. I'm going to use my normal bottom paint up method. As far as the brass goes, I'm going to ignore them. I'm going to wind up painting over them because uh, they're so tiny, and then I will do them last. So first up is I'm going to start with a mm, dark gray for the stonework. So I won't need my light gray since we don't have any two-tone stonework to do. So we're going to do our necromancer's cloak. Since we're doing basing, we need a bit more of it. And we're going to do our water, and I'm going to switch back to my other brush. It's a little thicker, and that's the way I like to work with my bases. So I'm going to mix that up, form the tip of it, and just get dived in. Uh, this guy mostly has stone work, so since I have a heavy brush right now, I'm going to do his first. And remember, you don't have to get close to stuff. Let the paint flow and it will sink to where you need. Like I said, I'm kind of ignoring the brass right now because they are so tiny there's no way you could do them first or paint around them. And it's not a problem because we're going to do them last. Uh, a lot of this is backed up against the rubble that I'll do with brown. Well, the, the light ochre. So I'm not going to worry about painting onto it. Because I will cover that up as need be. I'll probably let two colors kind of 
run up against each other a bit. Uh, back of his heel is lifted, so we just want to make sure we get under there. I will say a lot of the poses I really like. Um, they've started doing almost action poses with a lot of them, and they look a lot better than some I've seen. Dust was the worst for action poses. Half the time they looked like they were tripping over themselves. Alright. And that, I do believe, is that for this base. The ground. Make sure I've got everything. Okay, next one. And again, we're not worried about being super duper careful. All we're trying to do is get all of the constituent parts of the base broken up. Now, the large rocks on this, I will actually do dark and then dry brush the lighter tone over it. So I will wind up needing it. And this is why you put it back where it's supposed to be, because then you don't run around wondering what you've done with it. I swear I'm getting old. I can blink and lose a color. Uh, well, I have another light gray, so just... And of course, as soon as I pull that one out, I find the other one. They're probably the same, but I try to use the same paints for the same things so that all of my basing matches. I mean, the bases don't match exactly. I mean, they're not taking place in the same area in a lot of times. I found that the waves take place in the same area. Like, they made one base and then took a giant cookie cutter and broke it up into everything, which is actually a very cool way of doing it. And you can actually find a lot of um, materials that do it. Rollers, uh, trays that you press into green stuff, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that's basically what they did with this. Okay, I think that's broken pavement stone there. So let's get that. Right. And the third one. And he's kind of propelling himself off a of tactical rock there. I hate tactical rocks. But since these bases are not tactical rocks, they're entirely scenic, not as big of an issue. It's just regular models with one rock that they're leaping off that you then have to incorporate into the whole base design that I hate. Actually, no, that's not going to be that. That's going to be... Ochre. It was just flat, so I had my stomach for a minute. And that's not a problem, because I'll just let it dry and go over it. Alright. Big rock's done. Get under there. Go around the side. And dry brush on those large rocks will be good. Next primary color. Our towel light ochre. usually go direct from the pot, but this is kind of an older one. It's a pain to get it to come out. 
In uh, fact, I'm going to just have to go ahead and spoon it out. This way I can add water to it. Okay. There we go. Alright, so this should flow better now. Yeah, it does. I just want to make sure that we're not overflowing it, watering it down to the point where it's going to need a bajillion coats to look good. GW paints, though, have a pretty high pigment, so you can generally water them down a fair amount. You do get some air bubbles sometimes with the mix. They'll dissipate on their own. <laughs> and get around these rocks. <laughs> yeah, I actually think, yeah, this is mostly just dirt, so let's just cover this all. And once we apply the brown wash to the base, it'll merge everything nicely. You don't have to be super detailed with any of this. Perfect is the enemy of good. And these, I only paint to tabletop quality, as I've said before. If it looks good from a couple feet away, that's all that matters to me. Otherwise, my painting backlog would never go down. Which, it really doesn't anyway. But there you go. Just get all in there. And we'll have to wait for the this base to dry a bit to start picking out all of the brass.
one for this color. on that rock. I'm just going to take care of it when we dry brush it. Actually, I probably have enough black left over just to, or dark gray, just to touch it up again. That's fine. Never be afraid to go back and just apply a couple touch-ups to anything. All right. Now the metallic. So our gunmetal. more than we'll need. Very small amount of water. Metallic paints don't take as well to being thin, so you want to go very light on thinning them. Particle separation is worse. Alright. And we're just applying to this piece of corrugated metal. we get into all the ridges. Once again, we are not caring about the brass. It will be the very last thing we do and should provide a nice flash of brightness to it.
We're going to let those dry briefly, and then we will apply rust effects to those. Okay, so real quick, before we forget, we're going to apply some orange to the back of the... There we go. Just a little splash of color. Maybe a little deeper than that. There we go. All right, so now we still have some rust effect. We will need to pro add some more. Uh, in fact, I'm not even going to bother adding more contrast medium to it because I want it to be a heavy rust. Because um, this is stuff that's been lying around. So we'll get to that after we do our skull highlighting real quick because that has to dry as well. Okay, so Mr. Skull. And we're not getting in every nook and cranny of Mr. Skull. Just want to keep that shading from the black undercoat. And so that really, that skull really picks out of that base nicely. Skeleton Horde will provide the weathering we need on top of it, in addition to the brown wash that we're going to do over that. So, real quick, we're going to do some dry brush work. So I'm going to take our light gray. We're not thinning this at all, because this is for dry brush. So, we're just going to dab the brush in there, get the paint into the brittle, the, uh, the brush, and then make sure we're using dry part of our paper towel here until it's almost completely away, and then just flick. Because all we're looking to do is bring out the lines that already exist. And we're not going to do that on our large block here of stonework because we want to have some depth and difference between the other rocks. Am I going to worry you that got a bit onto it? Nope. Uh, no large rocks to pick out in that one. And here, just a couple. Alright. Again, that just applies some detail that we were missing. Rust. Da, 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 da. All right, I beam first. We're basically going to paint the whole thing because this is a rusted out I beam that's been sitting there. Then we're going to take a heavy amount and apply it into those edges there. So it's going to pool and give us a nice depth. For the corrugated, I'm just applying it fully on. I want it in those uh, corrugated ridges. I want it flowing down in there. There we go. And 
nice. And that will take a bit to dry. Um, so, the primer dries pretty quick, so we can go ahead with our skeleton horde. We're going to need to be careful, so we're not going to go with a lot of it, because we don't want it flowing onto the, anything else. So we're just going to apply it to the center, and then work it to the edges. So we have to wait for the rust to dry, so while it's doing that we're going to go ahead and proceed to uh, apply our black wash to the armor. So for that we're going to rely on our trusty Nuln oil, one of the few things that uh, GW gets right. So we're going to go ahead and start here, and we want to be careful that we're not overshadowing anything, so we're going to make sure to avoid the lenses that we've done. The eyes we're going to make sure we get. I'm going to start with his weapon here. Again, avoid the yellow. We're just applying this to pick out all the detail work. Obviously the cable we do want to hit, because it'll darken that cable a nice bit and give it some shade. Getting his fingers. So that's good for the weapon. Now we're going to start on the helmet. We're going to just apply on the top here and bring it down. It's going to run into the same places that are rusted, that's fine. It won't overpower all of the rust. We're going to go over our eyes here, and it really brings in the shading for the eyes. And down to the chest plate. Onto the chest, we want to make sure it's flowing there. It goes into all of the lines. Back up to the shoulders. sides here. Oop, that's a bit too much. So we'll return that to the pot. Again, other side shoulder. And we're going to try and make sure we're getting it into these elbow creases that we applied before really show the ridge detail and then coming down here I'm not applying it haphazardly but I am applying it heavily so you just kinda wanna watch it and see where it's flowing make sure it's flowing the way you want hit this back of the knee there, let it settle while I work around the front, bring down this leg to the front knee, again, make sure it's going where I want, and then I'm going to bring up from the boot, because I want to make sure that I'm not allowing it to settle down onto the base. Same here for the last section. Apply to the boot up. Go a little 
heavier here. Make sure it's picking out that knee, and we'll circle back to it. I'm just moving some to the lip there. Alright, so I'm going to start with the weapon again, and I'm going to go pretty heavy on the weapon actually. And the minigun doesn't have any alternate colors or anywhere to do like that, so it's important that we get a good wash on here to pick out all the details. We want each individual barrel to be nicely highlighted. Alrighty. Now, same approach. Starting with the helmet. Look around the sides. Down here, where we won't hit the bits of color we've applied. the chest. The chest here will be important for getting those details. should have done is probably apply the markings for the rank. I do it in a dark red though and it's pretty thick so it should be fine. You'll always forget something. And these are all going to be your basic knights. I think we did enough initiates in the other batch. Last one. Now, for this, for his weapon, I'm not really going to hit much. Um, I don't want it. I want to pick out the details, but I'm going to come under and up with this. I want to make sure I'm not interfering at all with any of the colors that I've put on here. Because I want those to remain vibrant. So we're just going to go in between with a little wash there. Alright, should be good. Then the helmet. Around back here. Down the middle with the eyes. Let's get the shoulders here. One of the important things when working with a wash like this is to not flick the bristles. You don't want to catapult droplets. Because no telling where they'll wind up. Probably not on the model you're working on, but it could wind up on one they've got laying around. Down the leg plates, to the knee, the chest a bit, and the other side. Sure we're getting the knee uh, joint there. And then up from the legs. I mean, up from the feet. <laughs> Oop, that might be a bit too much. Let's make sure we drain that a bit with the brush. Plant elsewhere. Alright, so a little heavy on that shoulder. 
So just move that around. Okay. Now, let's take a look and see if we can start getting that brass done. Still going to be a while to dry in the cracks of the corrugation, but we should be able to start on the brass itself. And we're going to go, we're not going to um, water down the brass because we want to go with a nice thick and we want to be able to like hit it with one swipe. We don't want it going everywhere. Um, so we're just going to kind of hit them. And I'm going to also change for my smaller brush and see what we can do. Alright, so uh, let's start over here. I'm basically just trying to flick paint onto this. If we happen to get a rock by accident, not a big deal. Because there's just tons of brass laying around, so. It'll all kind of blend. Especially once we go over it with a quick brown wash. And I may even pick them out some more after the wash. We'll see how it comes out. ones on this yellow especially are much harder to see. That's fine, we'll see how the wash goes. All right now. Getting the ones that are on this corrugation. Those little shell cases laying around. Mm. Now for the brown wash for the base. So we're going to switch back to our other brush. Because this is a base, I'm going to be using my inadvertently bought gloss bottle of Agrax Earthshade. So I guess I don't, I'm just trying to get rid of it at this point, and once I apply my sealant, it'll all go away. So I'm starting with the one that doesn't have the uh, corrugated metal and the rusted metal to dry up. Which, looking at the corrugation while I was working on it, it was already well on the way being done. So you can see this brown wash really picks out all of this cracks in the dried earth. We're just applying it nice and heavy. We want it seeping into every part to bring out all this detail. Over the skull. Very nice. Same here. I'm going to work from the top of the hills where they kind of flow down. Nice. 
Alrighty. Last one. Brown actually really picks out the casings nicely. All right, so there's that. Excuse me, have to wait for this to dry and then seal, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're back. We are sealed, and I've added the badges and the glow effect for the barrel. Uh, the barrel is simply a um, old school GW blazing orange dry brushed on and just heavier towards the front and then the badges are just mimicking the night badges from all the other Brotherhood of Steel stuff so our final component is to go ahead and attach some tufts so for this I've got some white PVA glue uh, the kind that you can get with the cow on it and my old brush and some tweezers. So to apply these, I'm just taking them off of the tweezers, making sure to keep them held. I'm going to apply the PVA glue to the bottom and then attaching. So looking at this one, I don't want to draw away from the skull. We got some rubble here. We have a nice flat section there. So we're going to go ahead and just apply it there. And looking at this one, um, I don't really think it needs to have any. It's got enough detail with the casings and whatnot. You don't always have to apply these. I find them scattered within the various models. It just adds a little bit. Especially if you got, say, duplicates so they have the same base. Changing up the density of foliage can really help. With this one, I didn't like how this little gully turned out. This back one's fine, but this one's kind of boring, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And that's what I primarily use these for. It's just kind of not necessarily covering up mistakes, but sections that I just don't like. It's also very important that you do this after you uh, seal it. Sealant will turn them brittle um, and you'll lose the, the natural shape of them. So it's always the last step in a model that I do. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these. Let me just adjust our focus here. All right, so as you can see, those colors on the helmet really draw it. The eyes are nice and darkened. Uh, we've got that badge there on the arm giving it its rank. The gun itself has a nice heating effect. Then the base, you can see all of those brass has really popped and, looks, and is drawn out even from the yellow. Uh, just looking at the back a bit here, you can see the definition on the shoulder joints. All looks really nice. I'm very happy with that one. And here we go again. This guy has a slightly more twisted forward forearm, so his badge is more obvious. The yellow came out really nice for the sledge. That little engine orange pops nice as well. 
everything along his back looks good. Mr. Skull is there. So yeah, looking real good. And you can see really how that tuft just adds an extra dimension to it. And then last but not least is our plasma guy. And I really like how those plasma cells turned out. I'm not going for a glow, I just want them to pop out. I know some people put glow on them, but in the game I don't really see that. So, and again, the helmet, the badge, the tip of that gun having that little copper on it looks really nice. The back is all nicely defined. And we've got our tuft on the base there. So, all in all, very happy with how these turned out. All right, so that is actually done for my friend's commission, so I think I'm ready to move on from some Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, so what I am looking at next, and she is primed and ready, we will be moving on to the Queen. Yes, I've had at least one person request me go ahead and finish this up, so uh, she is primed and ready. I've got her separate from her base right now, and the simple reason for this is there's so much detail on this base that is going to take, uh, it, it will be an entire video on itself, and I'll probably do the base first, then I will work on the underside and the bottom section of her, attach it, and then finish up the rest. So, we can look forward to that coming up, So and uh, I look forward to talking to you all later.